I just want to show you guys one of my amazing Christmas gifts this year. My defunct land sweatshirt. I had to wear it. I was going to change into something cuter, but then I was like, you know what? A, it's really comfortable, and B, I'm so excited about it. So I kept it on. I'm just keeping it casual today. That's all I'm saying. I love the sweatshirt. Hey, my name is Ivy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is the first video that I'm filming in 2024. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do sound like I have a cold because I'm getting over having a cold. I didn't want to wait any longer to film this video. I just wanted to, to get it done and out of the way because this was a video I was hoping to have up at the end of the year and I just wasn't able to get it out there, but we're doing it live right now. I wanted to give you an update on how my three month no buy at the end of 2023 ended up going. And the TLDR is I failed. <laughs> I really failed. Just to kind of go over what my rules, my self-set rules were for my no buy. I set my no buy up for the last three months of the year, purposefully knowing that that was going to be a really challenging time for me because it overlapped with my birthday and it overlapped with the holidays. And I thought to myself, hey, if I can get through these three months, you know, on a no buy, then I feel like I can do anything. Clearly, or maybe not so clearly, I will elaborate. I did not, did not, did not stick to my self set rules. I actually started off really strong. My rules were basically just that I was only relating my no buy to makeup. I wasn't relating it to skincare and I wasn't relating it to things that needed to be repurchased if I ran out of them. Like if it was, you know, a mascara or a brow gel or whatever it was, like I could repurchase something that I finished up, but I couldn't buy anything new. The only, I think like leeway that I sort of gave myself was that I knew, since I knew my birthday and the holidays were coming up, that if I was to receive gift money or gift cards or something like that, that I could use that to pick up some beauty purchases if I if there was something that was like really calling to me. So I did start off really strong. I felt like it was this feeling of revelation in the beginning where I was like, oh, it's such a relief to not have to think about whether or not I'm gonna buy something. I just know I'm not gonna buy it. Having that hard and fast rule really did feel so good for, for a while. I, I honestly think for the whole month of October, I was doing great. I was doing really, really great. And even well into November, I feel like I was doing really great. I started to backslide and kind of like tiptoe around my rules when I ended up purchasing a palette through Mercari that I bought specifically to remove the pans from and use to make my own BYOPs. I bought this ColourPop palette that I'd seen so many creators that I love use to make BYOPs. Um, I think it's called the Roaring Twenties palette or, or Roaring Hearts palette, something like that. I'll put a picture of it up. I purchased that palette very inexpensively. It wasn't about the money, but I was so excited that I'd kind of finally found it because it's not sold anymore by ColourPop. And I really, really liked the palette to make my own, my own color stories, my own palettes. So I allowed myself to buy that. <laughs> And I kind of rationalized it to myself, you know, why it was okay, why it wasn't that big of a deal. But in truth, it was the gateway drug into the rest of what kind of became my lack of no buy. After that point, there was another purchase that again, I kind of rationalized the Glam Light Scooby-Doo palettes that I'd had my eye on. They were these smaller color stories. Glam Light did a big sale. They were very, I think it was like half off or like two for the price of one, something, something like that. And it was again, kind of another rationalization moment for me where I was like, this is okay because it's a brand that I've really wanted to try. These palettes came out a year ago. They're on sale. They're at half the price. Like, let me just say it's okay. You know, I'm the one making the rules here. You know, I'm the captain now. I'm making the rules. Like, it's okay. I bought them and I 
felt fine about it. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel bad about it. I didn't feel guilty about it. I think I even came on Instagram and, and announced that I had purchased them because I wanted to be really transparent. After that, things just got muddy, muddy and messed up. It didn't matter whether the money that I was using to buy something came from a family member or, you know, was a gift or whether it was money that I was like, well, it was a little extra something, so I, it's okay. I just ended up doing more makeup purchasing. I bought a few more palettes. I pre-ordered some things that I was really excited about. And it became less about having the snow buy and more about this idea that I had sort of broken the seal. And like at a certain point, I think I started to say to myself things like, I've already broken my no buy. What's the point even if I turn it into saying now it's a low buy? I started out with a self-set guideline for what I wanted to do and I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I ended up purchasing more makeup. I ended up purchasing more things throughout the month of December. I could feel myself falling into old habits that are not healthy for me. They're just not. It's the kind of thing where, and I think Cam <laughs> Clover Room actually talked about this in a video that they did recently where, you know, it's like you will you will find any reason in the world to convince yourself that it's okay. You know, like, if, well, it, it's raining on a Tuesday. Like they gave such a really funny example of this, but I was basically able to rationalize any of the purchases that I made to myself. But at the end of the day, it's pretty black and white. I set up a three month no buy and I didn't stick to it. So I failed. I failed my three month no buy. It has nothing to do at the end of this with whether or not I regret purchasing something with whether or not, you know, I, I enjoy the thing that I bought. It doesn't feel great to get to the end of a thing and not have succeeded at it. You know, even if it's a thing that you set up for yourself that no one else is holding you accountable for except, your, except yourself, it still doesn't feel great. And so what I've tried to do now is kind of go back and analyze why I felt like it was okay to break certain rules, what I can do to structure myself better for the coming year so that I don't set myself up for failure. You know, if a three month no buy didn't work for me, why didn't it work for me and what would work for me? I'm allowing myself to sort of like push the guilt of not succeeding at what I set up for myself to the side. You know, I'm acknowledging it. I'm acknowledging the failure. I'm putting it out there, but I'm also looking at it as an opportunity to kind of learn about me a little bit more and figure out what I can do to set myself up for success. So with that, I think, fingers crossed, I think I've come up with a structure for my 2024 beauty spending that is actually going to work for me, create the kind of environment that I want with being both healthy and productive. It's, it's an experiment. I've never approached my beauty spending this way ever, and we will see how it goes, but I really did take learnings from the last three months and try to pull them into this next, you know, year of my life. What what do I actually think is going to work for me? So with that, let's get into what my plans for 2024 are. What am I doing in 2024 for my beauty spending? In the past, I have considered doing monthly budgets. I also like I said I tried to do this like three month no buy with the idea that I would do three months off, maybe one month on and kind of keep that up throughout the year. When I realized that that three month no buy didn't work, I think the reasons where I failed were that when you have a very strict hard and fast rule, but that is something that is, is sort of like time constrained, like, you know, a, a one month period or a two month period or three month period, it allows you to feel more sense of urgency when it comes to actually making a purchase or not making a purchase. And because I do frequent the indie beauty space and there are launches that are sometimes limited edition, come and go, etc., it feels like constraining myself to a certain time period of purchasing or not purchasing is bound to fail because there is going to be a point at which I really want to buy something potentially that 
I know if I don't purchase it at that moment, you know, it's gonna go out of stock. In my head, <laughs> rhetorically, that doesn't sound great either, the fact that I get sucked into that. It is a reality for the kind of beauty that I'm interested in and the kind of beauty that I frequent. And I don't want to ignore that. Like ignoring that would sort of be, I also think setting myself up for failure. This is a rambling way of saying that. I think what's going to work for me is setting up a beauty budget for the whole year. So giving myself a set number of dollars, dollars to spend within the course of the next 12 months. I feel like where I need to really hone in on is what my number is because I don't wanna make it huge, obviously in the sense that, you know, I'm overspending, I'm giving myself too much leeway and I don't wanna make it unrealistically small either. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through my last six months of beauty purchases and kind of tallying up where I am. And then I'm gonna use that to help me inform what I think my correct or appropriate dollar amount for the year should be. And then I'm gonna give myself that amount of money to spend as I want throughout the year. And when that money is done, that money is done. And I'm holding myself accountable that that is all the money that I'm gonna have for the year. I'm excited about this because I think that it frees me from some of the constraints of that mentality of being worried about something or not being worried about something you know, limiting myself to a time period and making it more just about, no, you have a budget. You have a budget and it's not flexible. It's for the year. You don't have the ability to change it month over month. It's just one set amount for the year that you have and that's it. And I do wanna make it so that it feels like it's appropriate for my life, for my channel, et cetera, but that it's it's still limiting, you know, right? Like I, I know what I've got. I'm not going beyond that cash only, in my account for the year. So it is strict in some ways, but I think that it's taking into account a lot of the learnings that I have from the last three months and the last few years of my beauty spending. I really do feel good about it. I think that it's gonna set me up for success and I think that it's going to be a good way to just give myself limitations, hold myself accountable, but not limit my options when it comes to choosing maybe what I wanna purchase at any given time. It's just that I'll know you have you have a top limit. And once you've reached that, you're, you're done. If I were to go through that entire amount in, you know, two months time, well, sorry, Ivy of the future, then you're screwed. Like you're not gonna be, you're not buying anything else for the rest of the year. So in that way, I'm really, I'm kind of excited for that challenge because I do think it's gonna make me even more discerning about my purchases, but it's not gonna make me feel like, oh, well, it's October and this thing that I really, 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 really want came out and I can't get it because I'm in my no buy in October. You know, those were the things that I felt like just weren't quite working for me. That's my plan for my beauty spending in 2024. I will keep you posted transparently about my dollar amount. I, I, I'm still working that out because I'm doing the math and for anyone that knows me, I'm really bad at math, like just very bad. So I'm trying really hard to do these numbers and to do the kind of accounting part of things multiple times just to make sure that I feel really good about everything. And so I haven't quite landed on that yet, but it doesn't really matter because what may be applicable for me in my life does not mean it's applicable for you and your life and everyone needs to make their own financial decisions. But if you think that setting up a yearly budget for your beauty spending would be a great way for you to approach it, definitely think about it. Like I said, I, I just kind of wanted to give you the reasons why I think it's gonna work better for me, why I think it's going to set me up for success instead of for failure. So that's a little summary of my <laughs> failure of a no buy and my plans for the future. I also just briefly want to touch on some of my other plans for the year as far as my relationship with my beauty collection, what I've got, how I want to get to know it better. As many of you know, I'm an eyeshadow lover. I'm a bit of a junkie, but I really don't like feeling as though I don't have a good grasp on everything that I have in my collection. And my singles collection and my eyeshadow palette collection both have gotten, I would say like a little unwieldy, especially in the last few months. My plan's to try to make sure that I know what I have, I love what I have, and I you know, declutter what isn't working for me to keep my collection edited, are to spend one week 
using every single eyeshadow palette that I have in my collection. So one week dedicated to every eyeshadow palette to really decide if I love it, if it works for me, if the colors are unique or duplicative of other things in my collection, to just make those decisions about what stays and what goes based on actual usage. And I feel like a week, a week straight of doing looks with one palette is a really, really good way to get to know your makeup because often you get excited, you get a new palette, you use it once, you use it twice, and then it goes to the back the line until you you know have something else that's shiny and new and it's not really a healthy way obviously to interact with your makeup at all but it's also just like you know it makes it more about the buying the getting the having of the item and not about the usage of the item and that's not how I want to use my makeup I want it I want to use my makeup I don't want it to sit there I'm actually starting off this week with a palette that I have not used very much at all to decide if I'm going to keep it or declutter it and that is the Cosmic Brushes Serenity palette when I picked up this and the Muse palette at the same time, I have found myself continually reaching for the Muse palette because I really love the color story. But when I bought it, I bought this one at the same time because I was also curious about this color story. And I just, I don't know, at that time I rationalized it by being like, well, you know, if I'm going to pay for shipping, I should get both. Um, it is what's on my eyes today. It is a beautiful palette. I am excited to use it this week and really test it and see if it works for me or if I feel like it would be better in the hands of someone else. This is week one testing out this palette and then at the end of the week, I'll decide if it stays or goes. And I'm gonna do that with every single eyeshadow palette in my collection. Then for my eyeshadow singles, my plan is to try to do at least, I'm, I'm hopeful, this is maybe a little ambitious, but at least one build my own palette be YOP a month to try and get to use more of my singles, to get more creative with my singles. It was a big goal of mine last year to do more BYOPs. I, I definitely did more this year or this past year than the year before, but I didn't do as much as I really wanted to. And it is something that I enjoy. And so I want to dedicate a little bit more time to that and really just get through more of my singles and showcase them more and figure out the ones that I love and the ones that maybe I don't need. So that's my eyeshadows. And because that's my biggest part of my makeup collection and kind of my biggest Achilles heel. I know that's the area that I need to keep eyes on and like really keep calling and calling and calling. The only other thing that I might try this year is more base products uh, when I use up the things that I have, which will take me a while. I have a lot of great base products now that I use regularly that I'm happy with. For me, really the focus is keeping my eyeshadow collection in check because it's also the thing that I make the most content around. And so I know that my desire to buy is gonna be there also for the growth of this channel. I just don't wanna get out of control and I wanna keep things level-headed and in a good place. Those are my kind of plans for using my makeup, relating to my makeup in a different way, keeping eyes on my makeup collection, being healthy, having good goals, all of that stuff. And then the last thing that I wanted to say is just that I do have some pretty big, lofty, you might say, goals for 2024 as far as some other bigger creative outlets that I wanna pursue that are still beauty related, but more in the design sector. That's about all I'm gonna say for right now that I'm prepared to say, because there will be more coming on this in the future when I have more kind of worked out and bigger things to share. But just know that I am gonna be starting to put some of my creative energy into some new things which I'm really excited about. And I'm hoping 2024 is gonna be a really, really productive year. And I'm planning to try to push myself a little bit. I do wanna be on the ball this year. You know, I'm gonna give myself grace and time and all that, you know, yeah, sure, all that stuff. But like, no, I need to push myself a little bit more. And this is the year that I wanna do it. So with all of that said, <laughs> I think this will probably be hopefully a shorter video, really just kind of an update, housekeeping, all that good stuff. I do hope that you enjoyed it and maybe it'll give you something to think about when you think about your own beauty spending, your own beauty collection this year, what you're doing in relation to getting to know your own makeup better. When it comes to what I'm sharing, ultimately it's about creativity and connecting, not about buying. 
So even though we all love to buy a new thing and that may never change, that isn't the crux of what I'm trying to do here. And I hope that you know that. This is a safe space though. You know, if you wanna talk about the shiny new eyeshadow palette you bought, believe me, I'm here for it. I'm here for that too. But just know that I am supportive of whatever beauty habits and spending habits you wanna put forth in 2024 alongside me. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for helping to grow this channel. I can't wait to keep talking to you as we move further into the year. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye.